What's going on everybody, this is Delmer and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I'm going to continue working on the Interaction SDK, where we're basically going to be using interactions to be able to interact with the curved canvas. A curved canvas has been something that I've been getting asked for a long time, and now you can actually create a UI that looks more like what you will see in a VR experience. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna walk you through all the components that you need to do to be able to implement your own curved canvas and also what kind of interactions you can apply such as using a Ray Interactor or if you want to use Poke Interactions, you can also do that. So let's jump into my computer and start working on it. All right, so the first thing that we need to do is we're gonna be adding a new component to this template scene that I have in here. And in fact, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and clone it and then you guys can use that template scene for any of the future tutorials. But this template scene contains an Oculus integration sample rig, which you can find in the Oculus examples. Also I have a run environment, which is also part of the Oculus examples and then directional light in an event system. So on this template scene, I think I'm gonna name it, since we're gonna be doing curved canvases, I'll just call it curved canvases and you guys can clone this and look at it after the fact. So the first thing that I'll do here is if you go down to the Oculus uh, folder and then go into interaction, if you scroll down, you're gonna see that they also have a bunch of prefabs in here, but the one that I that I really want, it's the one that is in the examples. And the Oculus Interaction Samples Ray Canvas is the one that we're gonna use. I was going to walk you through every single one of these components and, and basically tell you what it does, but I think it'll be overwhelming. I think it'll be easier if we just modify this component in here, which for some reason it went away, there we go. So you can drag it and drop it, modify it, and then, you know, that's going to, that's going to work for you. But what I wanna do today though, is I'm gonna grab the, if you remember from the previous video, I had this debug area, right? And if I expand the debug area and we set it, let's go ahead and put it in a place. Okay, there we go. So we have it, we have it right here and I'll put it, let's just change the, I think the rotation. I just wanted to make it a little, a little cooler. So I'll go ahead and put it right here. And, and the way that it works, this, this debug area was gonna be the one that I'm using for you know, for printing information about the games that I'm building and things like that. So it's easier to see the information and some of the components that it has, if we go into the Bulgaria, it's pretty simple. It has a background, it has the title, which says the Bulgaria. Actually, this one is the title header. So it's just basically that banner going across. And then the title text is just the Bulgaria. And then the debug text, this is gonna be basically what contains the basically a reference to text mesh so we can write to the log and if you go to the bug area there's a logger component in here so what i'm going to do is we're, let's go ahead and modify it so that we can make it more look like vr so we'll just do a curve so I'll just put it right here so we have it next to it and if we go close to this one this is going to be the one that we're going to be modifying so if you needed to implement something like this in your own game this is normally what i would probably recommend that you do you just use the the prefab that the Oculus team provided for you. And then we can just go ahead and rename it. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and rename this to be something like uh, the bug area curve. That way we know that this is gonna be the one that has the curve implementation. And just to kind of give you an idea of some of the components, this is gonna have a ray interactable because we're gonna be using a ray from our hands to be able to select and interact with UI components. Also a pointable canvas, canvas cylinder. The idea behind this is it's gonna have some curvature, right? So we're gonna have, basically the system is gonna build a mesh that is gonna be a cylinder and this is going to basically project onto that cylinder. It just, that's just all handled by Oculus. We don't have to do much of that. The only thing in here that you can, you know, that you can modify, there's multiple things that you can modify, but the one that I, that I modified was the curve radius and this is gonna determine how much curvature the the vr canvas is going to have so we can now leave it at two for now and then there's going to be multiple things in here that we're going to be able to change pointable canvas unity event wrapper this one is going to be helpful because anytime we have the ray pointing at the canvas we're going to be able to capture one of the actions that get broadcast from the event so when somebody is highlighting when we're highlighting the canvas this is going to be executed when we're hovering over the canvas, when we're selecting anything in the canvas, basically it's gonna, it's gonna be playing sound. So you can change this to be any type of events that you like. So what I'm gonna do here though, is if we go into this one, I'm gonna go ahead and extend it, go ahead and extend it.
All right, guys, so I got these running. You guys can see the UI, it's currently working. But if I try to do a selection on anything, there's really no race, and that's something that we need to fix. I'm also, I also want to show you how we can change the radius in runtime. So if I wanted to change this to be like something like maybe two, to have a larger uh, radius, we can do that. So you guys can see, we can get back in here. So the reason why we don't have rays yet is because we haven't really told the system to, to have rays in our hands and, and also the controllers. I'm also going to move this back a little bit, maybe about 1.2 so that we can see the radius doesn't affect. And I also changed this color to be black because the canvas is going to, there's a flat canvas behind it and it doesn't look good if you have transparency on the background. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you, so if we go into the sample rig and then input and then hands, you're gonna see like if you wanna modify the controllers to have rays, there's also interactors in here for poke interactors. If you wanted to poke something, then this has it already out of the box. So what I'm gonna do for arrays is we're gonna go ahead and expand this. And if you go into the interaction folder under Oculus, you're gonna see that we also have array option in here. And let me make this a little bit bigger so you guys can see the whole thing. So there's gonna be one for the controller array and also one for the hand ray interactor. I think what I'm gonna do for this video, we're just gonna do the, the, the actual hand one. But you're more than welcome to do, you know, if you wanted to do the controller one, you can just drag the controller and drop it into the controller interactor. I'm also going to do that for the other hand, so make sure that you go here and you have the right hand selected. So this one we can just drag and drop as well in here. And then you can also rename them and make sure that you drag it and drop it in the right place. Okay, so if you wanna rename it, let's just go ahead and do this one, it's gonna be left. And then the only thing that you need to change in here is gonna be which hand it's going to be associated with. So remember, this one is gonna take an eye hand interface. And then this one, I'm just gonna go ahead and rename it as well. It's gonna be for the right hand. And then we'll just go ahead and drag and drop our hand in here. Just make sure you do that. And I think everything is gonna work because we have the, the right interactors already in our component. You can see that we have that right interactable. So that means that we can interact with the canvas. So I can go ahead and hit play and we can see if this is going to work. There should be a ray that comes out of our hands. Now, and if I go here, you can see that, that it's happening, right? And I can go ahead and tap it. And if I go far, you know, and select something, you can see that everything is getting selected. And I'm gonna go into 2D. Make sure that I have the that I have the 2D selected. That way we can resize this. And, and what I'm gonna do in here, we're just gonna add a, a couple of things, something simple. We can go ahead and drag and right click on the sample canvas and then go into UI. And then I can select, you know, to add a button, right? And this could be something like clear lock. So we can say clear lock button. Gonna move it here. Let me go ahead and get closer. And we can probably put it somewhere in here. This is not gonna work, but I'm gonna show you why. Clear locks. And I'm doing this on purpose so you guys know how the components work. Okay, so we have that. Let's say that we added something else. We also need to bind these two. The, the proper method. So if you go into on click and then drag and drop this component here, go into logger. So this could be any method that you want to execute. In my case, I have a clear logs. And the idea is that it's gonna clear this log. So I'm gonna add another component. This one's just gonna be a placeholder. We're not gonna be using it. And I'm gonna be, it's gonna be a drop down, right? And let's say that we wanted to change something about this, uh, perhaps the radius in runtime, you can do. I'm just gonna leave it like that and, and we're not gonna do anything. So let's go ahead and hit play, see, if this is gonna work. And I know that it's not gonna work and I'm gonna show you why. So if I go here and we can see our hands and I can interact, but I can't really clear anything. Actually, it is working and I thought it wasn't gonna work. <laughs> and I thought I didn't add that component, but I'm gonna show you why I didn't think it wasn't gonna work. So if you go into the event system here and you go, okay, so I did add it. So normally what you'll see here, there's gonna be a standard input handler. So if I go standard input module, this is what you'll see it by default, right? You're gonna have the event system, you're gonna have a standalone input module. And this is the input module that basically directs everything that you're doing with the input to the canvas so that we can actually select, we can, you know, if you wanna type on a text box, you can do that. If you want to see a drop down selection, you can do that basically by clicking or touching, depending on the platform. In our case, we're using VR, so we don't need the standalone input module because we're using a different implementation. So in this case, what you would need to do is you're basically going to be adding the point module, there we go, pointable canvas module. And that pointable canvas module is the one that is going to be directing everything to, you know, to, to the actual canvas. So if we go back in, 
and we hit play, everything should be working because we have that component. So if I go in here and I select something, you know, I, I'm able to select B and C and I can clear the log as well, as you guys can see. So I'm highlighting things and, and then if I go here, I can clear the log. So the last thing that I also wanted to show you is there you can also do what's called a poke interactor. And there's an example that the Oculus team put together that you can look at. But you can also you look at the prefabs that, in, that is in here. So if you look at the poke button, that's going to have everything that you need to be able to, to poke a button. You also have this menu in here, which, which is the Oculus Interaction Samples button menu. And that is one that I used at the beginning of the video of the introduction videos. And, and this is gonna allow you to poke basically a UI, right? So if I wanted to do that, you can go ahead and hit play. You're gonna see that this is gonna work out of the box and you can basically just follow their implementation to be able to use that. But I can basically just tap and tap and, and select it. And every time you select it, it's gonna change one of the scenes. So you can see that that is currently, is currently working. So you can use that implementation if you wanted to use and implement your own poke system. In this case, because I'm using, you know, more of a far type of UI where I just want, I don't want to poke, then you can do that. But if you had a menu where maybe when you turn your hand, you wanna, you know, show a menu and you wanna basically poke it, that's when you will use that type of interaction or, or something like in here, or if you're building a game where you have to go through and select different UI components and, and you want the user to feel like they're poking on something, I think that's when you'll use that implementation. And because these poke buttons, like if you go and drill in, for example, the basic grab, they already have a poke interactable. You can you know specify how far the button is gonna go. Also, this is going to allow you, the interactable Unity event wrapper is going to allow you to send events if something happens, for instance, when you hover over a button, when you on hover, when you select it. And then the other trick in here is just make sure that you have a hand poke interactor or in the case of the controller, the controller poke interactor. So that's how those two are going to work together. That's honestly everything that I wanted to show you guys. I'm gonna be putting this in GitHub so you guys can download it. But to be honest, what the Interaction SDK is providing you, it's basically more than enough to be able to implement your own Curve Canvas. So if you guys have any other questions, please let me know in the comments. Thank you.